welcome to the proper pineapple i am holly my shawl is crooked there we go <laughs> And if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are a longtime subscriber, thank you for being a part of the Proper Pineapple family. This is a crochet and knitting and random stuff podcast. <laughs> if you are looking for me elsewhere, I am on Facebook at the Proper Pineapple, on Instagram at the Proper Pineapple, on Ravelry as Miss Proper Pineapple. I think it's the Proper Pineapple on Lovecrafts, or it might just be Holly Miller, which is my name. Um... You can go to my website, thepropperpineapple.com, or you can email me at thepropperpineapple at gmail.com. Blah. <laughs> a lot to say. You guys, I'm wearing this little hat. If you guys watched my video earlier this month, this came in my knit crate, and I love it. And I found something to do with it! One of my amazing subscribers sent me this a while ago, and my son just reminded me. It's this stunning little pewter pineapple, and he is getting a hat. Look at it. Look at the little pewter pineapple with his hat. <laughs> I can't even right now. Look at it. It's wearing a hat, you guys. This is going to sit on a shelf in my room so I can giggle every day. Mr. Pineapple, why aren't you laughing? It's a pineapple wearing a hat. <laughs> that was fake. That was so fake. Okay, you guys. I gotta put that down or we're never gonna get anywhere in this podcast. So you guys, December, January were so busy for me and there was so much going on in my life. I didn't do much, but I am gonna share what I did. So this is gonna be a quick, short little podcast just to slide it in here. And then I'm gonna get, I have so many projects I'm gonna get started on. Um, Let's see, I'm looking around. Finished objects, let's talk about finished objects. I only have one finished objects, but it's multiple of said finished object. And it's a kind of a weird, obscure object. So you guys know I'm making this hexagon blanket back here, right? Uh, I'm not done yet because I need to get some ones to make the little halvesies there. But I had in, um, in this bag that I made, this entire bag was filled with the leftovers for these little hexagons that weren't enough to make another one. They weren't even enough to make a half one, but I just didn't want to get rid of them. So I had this bag filled with them. And as you can see, it's empty now because I'm going to show you what I made with them. We use a lot of like pot holders and stuff to just sit stuff on. And so I just, let's see, what's the first one I did? I'll show them in order. Made eight of them. This is the first one I made. I just decided that I was going to make circular, because these are, this is like a 70% cotton. So it's got enough cotton that I'm okay with like using it like pot holders and whatnot. And so I just started in a circle and kept going and I would use as many as I could to make them as big as I needed to. So this is the first one I made. These need to be washed. They will lay flat. It's just, it naturally curls in until you wash them. I just finished these yesterday. So this one started with the blue and went on out to some brown. I loved that one. And then I decided to be a little more crazy with it. Because this one, I kind of just reached into the bag, but I kind of looked where I was reaching. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this one, I just kind of reached into the bag. Look at how crazy this is. This one's my favorite with this like pinky purple and it goes out all crazy like, I love it. Uh, and then I decided to actually do one deliberately. So I did this pink one, love it. Then I was, my daughter wanted me to do a Christmas one. So here's the Christmas one, <laughs> love it. Then I was going to let the kids all pick some. So I let them pick out a certain number of the little leftovers. And then I had what was left over and all went into one. And at first it was looking stunning. And then I had to or add the orange and the white because it's just what the leftover was. But here it is. It started fading from this blue to the green and it was so stunning. And then I had to put the orange and white on there. Eh, but it's okay. I still love it. Okay, now I'm going to show you the ones my kids made. So first my daughter did this one. She Well, she didn't make them, she picked out the colors. She did this one. This reminds me of like Arizona or something. I don't know why. It's so like pretty. All the Indian stuff. Yeah, like the Indian stuff. I love that. New Mexico. And then Squishy, my little guy, he picked this one. He said these colors go great together. <laughs> so that's that. And then my oldest son picked this one and it's probably my favorite. You'll see why. It's a rainbow. It's like a dirty old rainbow. Isn't it so cool? It's so pretty. I love this one. Now all the dogs are going to run. So I got eight of them. Just circles. I just kept increasing until it was as big as I wanted it to be. There was no like pattern or anything crazy. I just did it. 
And I think I'm gonna keep doing this because I like this a lot. So like, and it was super easy to do. So I'm gonna keep doing these for pot holders and whatnot. So I love this. That's my only finished object, you guys. Sorry I had to cut there, guys. The dogs got a little crazy. Anyways, I have two crochet whips and one knitting whip to show, share with you guys. So that'd be about it. So my first one is in this camper bag made by Deb at um, Heaven, Heavenly Textiles. I love Deb. I've got to meet her a couple of times. And this bag is stunning. It's got all these little campers on it. Absolutely love it. Okay, so the pattern is called Cur something. Cur -cur -cur I, it's, I'll write it down here. That's where I'll write it. And then there will be a link to it. And I'll, I'll put a picture in. Here's the my dog is on me and she's like licking her foot and it's weird anyways here's the pattern so cute and so what i'm using is some knit crate yarn so it's the yuri yarn it's their sugared worsted in the color rose 70 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon and 10 percent stellina and so here is the color i'm using you guys remember this came in a knit crate Oh gosh, forever ago. And I actually got the brown and somebody traded me for this beautiful grapey purple. I am using my wonderful, you know what? I don't know what size this is. You guys, I'm so bad. They don't put their sizes on their hooks. Um, let's see. Let's just take a second here. So somebody sent me some wonderful furls hooks and I'm using the lime green candy shop hook, which I'm looking up right now. Each hook is only one color. So the lime green is the six. I thought it was the six, but this stunning one, I love it so much. Thank you for these hooks. I am using it all the time. And so I started the pattern and this is as much as I have done. Let me get that up there so you can see the texture. Isn't it a really interesting texture? It's like these V's going in. It's just pretty V work everywhere. It's really pretty. It doesn't even look crocheted. And this yarn is turning out stunning, which I love so much. Um, I did modify the pattern. Now, the pattern is a paid-for pattern, so I cannot tell you, Bella, I cannot tell you all the different details, but um, it is a paid-for pattern, so I did buy it. Uh, I, I think I've talked about this before. I like my cobbles a little closer, so I actually took out a, a hunk of stitches to make mine a little smaller. The original one is bigger and a little more like drapey everywhere. I wanted mine a little smaller, a little closer to my neck. So I took out some stitches, which means I have to do the increases and stuff a little differently. But I just did the math on that. But I am only a little way through this and I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to wear it. This purple is beautiful with that Stellina in it. It's so great to work with. And it's got this adorable camper stitch marker that one of my people made for me. I love it so much. And the hook is stunning. So that is one of my whips. Again, I haven't done much, you guys. Not much on it at all. Um, I will put a stitch marker to mark this spot so that next time I show it, you'll get to see how far I've made it. <laughs> and that's about, that's, you know, that's it about that project. I really like it. Like I said at first, I was it the stitch that you use is different. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it because, again, it's a paid-for pattern. It is definitely different. You definitely want to look up some YouTube tutorials on it. And you might have to keep referring back to them every time you put it down. It's a little tricky, a little wonky. I definitely wouldn't say beginner-friendly. I would say in, maybe an eager beginner or a, a determined beginner or an intermediate. But it's really pretty, and I really can't wait to get it done. I think the finished effect, look at this. This is the little thing making all that noise. Look at this face. She said, what? I'm not doing nothing, Mommy. She's down here growling because we made her come in. She's barking everywhere. I think you could do it, but it's definitely not something that I would say is beginner. I love it, and I love my bag so much. Okay, my next crochet project is in a bag I made. Look at my bag. Oh, this is my lumberjack bag. So it's got little lumberjack guys, and then on the inside, there's like logs. That's so cute. This was one of my favorite bags I ever, ever, ever made. Okay, so let me just, I'm opening something that's going to tell me everything I need to know here. This is called the Written in the Stars um, shawl by Rachie Ray, Newman Designs. You guys love this so much. Love the bag. But let's talk about it. So the yarn I'm using is Malabrigo, both of them. 
So the first one is Malabrigo Sock, I believe. Right? Yeah, Malabrigo Sock in their Frank Ochre colorway. And the other one is Malabrigo Sock, but in the Disfrezze? D-I-S-F-R-A-Z Disfrezze colorway, which is this crazy speckle. You will know that me and Al had got these at, um, I think it was Stitches Midwest. Yes, it was Stitches Midwest because I was on a yellow kick then. And she bought a solid from Malabrigo and a speckly that was the same. We were going to make the same design. It was another Rachie New Designs pattern. And I bought it and I had it and I was getting ready to make it. And I just didn't feel it. I wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't working for me. And so then I was like, oh, what do I do? So then I scrolled just a little bit in this Written in the Star shawl. I'll put a picture here not pretty came up and I was like okay that's the one I'm gonna make that is the one I'm gonna make so I've only done a little bit of it literally just a teeny little bit but it is so pretty okay so here we go here it is and you have to get this all done and block it and there are tails so okay her pattern calls for there's a way that she works it so you don't have to cut the yarn. I decided I wanted to cut the yarn every time. So you would not have tails if you follow the pattern. I decided to be a rebel. <laughs> okay, sorry about that cut again, but um, dogs again. So anyways, here it is. It's so pretty. Uh, well, I think it maybe goes this way. Yeah, like this. Okay. So you do like your solid and then you do the lace in your speckle or you could do the solid as the and then you're solid and you can do you can choose so you can choose not to have tails I chose tails um, or you can choose they have this the sawtooth edge you can make it flat if you didn't want the sawtooth edge I wanted the sawtooth edge so like I said I'm only three little tiny sections into this and I love it so much look at how good this let me try to get it on my hand so you can see it the speckled is going with the yellow isn't that so pretty this beautiful mustardy yellow and then when this gets blocked out you guys look at that oh so pretty I'm loving this so much she is a genius because this is beautiful so beautiful I cannot wait to wear this I have a mustard yellow dress that this is gonna look great with so that is it oh I should show you the cakes of yarn so you get a better idea this is the Frank Ochre and then this is that dis this frizz, this, this something. This is them. Yeah. I love them. I think they're going to be so great together. And I'm super excited I'm making this shawl. I love it. And I'm using my 3.75 hook from Touche Crochet. You guys know I love her hooks. I love this hook so much. It has made a lot of things and I love it. So that is my only other crochet whip right now. Uh, but that is on my Make 9. So I'm excited I'm getting started on that. And last is my Knitting Whip. And it is in this stunning feather bag by um, Home Fire Rich. Uh, she sent this to me for my birthday last year. And I love this so much, you guys. I just adore this. Uh, her bags are so great. You should definitely go check them out. So the pattern is... I've showed this before, but I'll show it again. I actually have this one printed out. It is the Birds of a Feather by Andrea Mowry. And I am using Holly Bait. Mm, look at Holly Bait. By Iron Wheel Farms. This is one of my colorways they make me. And Boho by Stitch Together Studio in her mohair. Isn't that pretty? Loving this. I am using using whatever the pattern called for but let me read my needles here a us6 four millimeter needle um these are my licky interchangeable circulars let me just get it it does have a lot of tails i made it the last time i showed this to you guys i had just done uh i had just gotten into the lace i have made it through the first lace section this is how much i have of it so far which is barely nothing but I made it through that first lace section. See it? It's so pretty. I messed it up a little, but not that bad. And now I'm on to my next mohair and I'm almost done with that. And then it'll go back and start doing the pattern over again. I love this. I cannot wait to get this done. I think it's going to be so much fun. The mohair is ridiculous to work with, you guys. It's so soft that it's 
fun, but then so tiny and thin. And don't make a mistake. I have made a ton of mistakes in this, but I don't go back. I just work with them. I just, I just make them work and I go with it because one, if you try to pull back mohair, you might as well just get your scissors out because you're not getting it back. But I love it. And how well does this boho mohair go with Holly Bait? They just like, they match perfectly. They should be sold as a set. Ugh, I love it. Um, and I want, I showed this one last because I wanted to talk about something now that I'm done showing all my projects. That's all I've got going on there. Um, if you guys watch, uh, the Love and Stitches or Nitty Natty, Natalie on YouTube, she, for the month of January has been doing this, um, 30 minutes a day challenge where you pick one project and work on it for 30 minutes a day. And I thought that was awesome, but I didn't get on board. I don't know why I was just being lazy this month. So what I want to do is try every month of this year to pick one project at the beginning of the month and spend 30 minutes a day working on it, hopefully either finishing it within that month and then, you know, I get to relax and pick another, or, you know, if it's just, just get a lot of it done. So, because I've had this on the needles for a really long time, this is going to be my February 30 minutes a day project. I'm gonna set a timer, I'm gonna work on 30 minutes, I'm gonna get it done. Um, and I will have a hashtag I'm gonna use because I will post progress photos throughout the month of February. If you guys want to join in, this isn't a cal or anything like that. This is just motivation to make something. Spend time every day working on one project till it gets done. Because a lot of times I have, I have this whole bucket of projects, you guys, and I'm only working on three right now. It's crazy. So sometimes I just need to stick with one and I'm going to stick with this one till it's done. I want to get this one done. So hopefully you guys will want to do that too. I think it would be great. It'd be good motivation. We could do it together. We'll share photos. It'd be a ton of fun. Um, I don't really have too many. I mean, I, don't, I didn't get any mail. No fun mail for me today. No new purchases. I've been kind of, you know, on a restriction. Um, I am wearing, I'm wearing, I forgot to tell you in the beginning, this is my armor shawl. I designed this and you can buy this on my Ravelry, on my Lovecrafts or just off my website. I love this shawl. It is made with dragonfly fibers, they're District 12s, and it's their um, single strand or single, there's no, oh, it's so pretty, so luscious. I love this so much. Um, I did want to share one more thing with you guys. So, I know I sometimes have trouble keeping track of stuff. Sometimes I never even, like as you see, I only had one pattern printed out. I don't even print out the patterns. Sometimes I just... Um, have them on my phone, but sometimes I have trouble finding them. Well, I found this app called Row Counter. I don't know if I can show you. Is it going to blow out my screen? There's this little guy right here, Row Counter, if that's working or not. You guys see all the crazy things I have on there. Uh, anyways, and you open it up. Let's get out of it. You can pay for it. Cancel. What does this say? Okay, okay, great. Get out of there. Sorry. I got to get, get back to home. So you open it up. And you can add stuff, but there's premium features like photos and whatnot. Um, I just have three. And you can put in your patterns and you can work on them with it. It has a row counter. So like if I pick my written in the stars, pick that. It has, you can see, I was able to download the pattern right to the app. It has a row counter. It tells you what row I'm on. Um, there are features like highlighting and stuff like that that you can use if you pay the premium. Um, I didn't. I'm just using it to keep track of my patterns, and I really like it. But if you guys have any sort of apps like that you think I'd like better, please let me know because I tried a few. I hated them, and then I landed on this one. So I just kind of like tried her out. But um, we got a lot of great stuff coming up this year for the proper pineapple. More giveaways, some fun stuff. And, you know, I'm just excited to do 2020 with you guys. But I'm going to get out of here because my battery is about to die and my kids are standing outside my window and <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> so please stay tuned. There is tons more to happen on the proper pineapple in the year 2020. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.